Hi everybody, I'm excited, aren't you? VSTs in Reason, I was waiting for this for so long. I downloaded the update this morning and started to explore a little. I own Contact 5 and Complete from native instruments that I have been using previously on Digital Performer. But I really prefer Reason, and I tried it today. It works. So now I'm really excited. When I'm producing music, one of the things I'm very picky about is to be able to mix drums to my liking, with all the hit types being separated into different channels of the mixer. It is actually possible to do that directly inside a VST plugin, but when I'm doing the final mix, I really prefer having everything on the same mixer and using the same tools to have consistent sound. And besides, it allows a much clearer view on things when frequency mixing. So how can I do this using a virtual drummer running in contact within Reason? That is what I have been looking at this afternoon, and I thought I should share this with the Reason community that has helped me progress so many times. This should also give you a view on how the routing inside contact is organized. So first, let's understand what we are trying to do here with a diagram. Before we start, Let's have a look at the diagram. This diagram will summarize the objective of this video. It summarizes what we are going to do here. But it also shows you the structure of the connections between Reason and the various virtual instruments that you will be using. Reason supports VST. Contact is actually a player. It's a VST player. So if it's a player, it also needs to be loaded with some instruments. So inside Contact, you have some plugins, instruments. What type of instruments? Well, these are usually sample-based instruments. Contact is a sample player. The one we will be using in this video is a virtual drummer. That is, uh, some drum hits or drum loops which are taken in the studio with various mics positioned at different positions within the drum kit. For example, one mic for the snare, one mic for the kick. Some mics overhead. You know, this kind of stuff. Well, in this virtual instruments, there is an instrument mixer corresponding to the mix of the different mics on the drum kit. So you have a track for the kick, a track for the snare, a track for the overheads, one for the hi-hat, etc. This instrument mixer is the output of the virtual instrument and needs to be, contact, uh, <laughs> needs to be connected to the output of contact. So Contact also has a mixer included. We need to make the correlation between the different tracks of the instrument and the tracks in Contact. The output of the Contact mixer will be the output which will go in the VST support module. The outputs of the VST support modules will correspond each of them, one by one, to the various outputs of Contact and therefore of the instrument mixer. To the outputs of the VST support module, we can connect some mixer channels, which correspond to slices in our well-known SSL simulation in Reason. Voilà, so that's what we are going to do. There are actually three connections to do. The first connection that we will do is between the contact mixer and the VST support module. Then we will do the connection between the instrument mixer and the contact mixer. And finally, we will connect the outputs of the VST support modules to various mixer channels corresponding to the slices in the Reason mixer. Looks complicated, right? No, it's not really complicated. You have to do it once, and then in contact you can actually save some templates. So things can go quite quickly once you get used to it. So don't worry, it's not very complicated. And that's why I made this video, to make it simple. So let's start. You can see the three windows in Reason the mixer, the rack and the sequencer, and on the left, the browser. I'm going to select the VST, so it's going to be contact with five outputs. When I drag and drop it into the rack, I can see the module supporting the VSTs with contact loaded in. I can open the interface of contact and I see three main sections. A first section is empty, that's where I will put the instrument. The section on the left is a browser. 
from which I can select the instruments which, are, which I own and which are playable in contact. And on the bottom, I can see Contacts Mixer that I can visualize or uh, remove by pressing on the output button. This mixer corresponds actually to the output section of Contact. This is a mixer that will connect with Reason. I select a kit. And by after dragging and dropping it uh, into the empty window, I will have my instruments uh, active. For this instrument, I've got four tabs. Grooves, Options, Kit and Mixer. I can select Groove, for example, in order to change the groove that I'm going to use. The grooves are actually like Rex files a little bit. They're made of single hits which are grouped into a loop. Let's select the one by default. The instrument has also a mixer. Each of the tracks of this mixer correspond to one of the microphones which is located onto the drum kit. This is also the mixer that will be connected to the output mixer of contact. If I want to import the groove loop uh, in the sequencer of reason, I press on this button and drag and drop it inside the sequencer. That will create a MIDI track. I take the MIDI data and then I place it in the track corresponding to the VST. Then if I want, I can loop it. When I look at the mix of the instrument, I observe the different tracks corresponding to the different mics which are on the drum kit. And when I play the sample, I can actually realize which ones are active. There's the kick, the snare, the hi-hat, the stereo overheads, the room mic, and, the, uh, and then there's also a mono overhead. So I will need six channels. Let's add channels. So I add five more channels, and these are mono, so only uh, one uh, channel per channel. <laughs> oh, but I forgot that this overhead is stereo, so we'll, we'll actually only add four channels. And an extra one, which is stereo. Now I will rename the channels and assign them some outputs. The first one is a kick. Ah, it was a stereo channel, so I'll put it mono now. Ah, something happened here which is quite important. What happened is that when I modify the configuration of the output of contact, it will not be recognized by the instrument. So, actually what we should do is first configure contact and then load the instrument. So here I will have to delete the instrument and reload it again. So in order to prevent having to do all these operations, I will show you later, once we're done, how to save a configuration. So now the second channel, the snare, I assign it to the second output and I repeat the operation for the other uh, tracks. So then afterwards it's a hi-hat Then it will be the room. No, it's the stereo overheads. No, the room. <laughs> then on channel number five, I will place the mono overhead. And finally, the stereo overheads, which will take channels 6 and 7. Done. Now, of course, when I play it, I only hear everything locked down onto the mono first track. 
Now I have to connect the instrument to the contact output. But as you can see, it does not recognize the different outputs we have created. So we will have to reload the instrument. Now it's a good idea to save the configuration in contact. And name it whatever we want, and we can recall it when we need to. So I actually personally have a certain amount of uh, templates like this. Now I can reload the instrument. Now I want to assign to each of the channels in the instrument mixer to each of the channels of the contact output mixer. So for that, I click on the correct channel in the instrument mixer, here the kick, and click on settings. And then you see that I have actually now the contact uh, channels listed. <clears throat> and it's easy to assign. We're done. So now it's time to come back to reason. Let's look at the back of the reason module that supports VST. Yeah, it's here. I'm still not used to it yet. <laughs> and you can see that we have extra outputs. There's a little LED on the top. Each time the LED is lit, that means the output is active. Now I will create six mixer channels and rename them. Now I can connect each of the outputs of the contact to the corresponding mixer channel. Hmm, I kind of forgot here, so I'm calling back the, uh, the plugin. Here we go. So, room was four, mono overhead five, and the other one, okay, got it. And finally, the stereo one. We're done. As you can see, the signal is routed to each of the mixer channels. If I call the mixer, I can see it there. And now I'm free to mix as if everything was in reason. Super cool. I'm totally free now and I can do whatever I want to each of the sections. For example, on the cake, I could uh, try to remove some highs. And on the snare, I could, for example, boost a certain frequency range. Very practical for frequency mixing. Usually, I will always do this at the end of a track, you know. I just, when I compose, I just go for it. I just need to, to, the beats I, on one track, I'm fine. But when I'm doing the mixing, when I really want to get a professional sound, I have to do that. I have to be in control. You could do this in, in the, the plugin, but this is quite a pain, you know, because you would have the mix on one side, you would have the plugin on the other, you had to go from one to the other, and in the end you would kind of possibly get confused and miss things. Well, I hope this was uh, very useful to you, and uh, that uh, it will be a good first step into the knowledge of VSTs in Reason. I'm so excited, I'm going to make great tracks now, and it's going to be so easy, that's so cool. Thanks, Pops. Bye.